What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we have a bit of an unfortunate video to talk about on the channel. People have been asking for a while if I would do reaction videos of other train crews and other things that happen in railroading. Um, and unfortunately, uh, there was a bit of a nasty accident on the Strasbourg Railroad today. If you follow many of the train social media and steam railroading social media, you've probably seen the footage. Um, it's incredible in the, the bad way. And it's kind of sad too. I wanted to talk about this incident on the channel, not because I want to smear the Strasbourg Railroad or the train crew or anything. I want to talk about railroad safety, maybe get on the soapbox a little bit. Um, this could have been so much worse than it was, but it's still not great. There's a couple videos out there from different perspectives on the incident. I'm going to be using the phone footage from the train that the 475 was supposed to be running around. I couldn't find the source where it originally came from because it's been reposted so many times. So if this is your video, please let me know. Here's what happened. Yeah, so that's still nasty every time I watch it. The incident happened earlier this morning, and it popped up all over the internet, and we were watching it at the museum, and it's one of those incredulous things that you can't really believe happened. So we need to leave the whole investigation side of these things and all that sort of thing to the Strasbourg Railroad and to the NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, and probably the FRA. What appears to have happened is that the 475 was going to run around the train to get on the other end and bring the train back to Strasbourg itself, and the switch wasn't lined for their intended route of travel. It was lined for the siding where the excavator and cut of cars was. And here comes the soapbox. This is something that I preached about every day when I worked for BNSF. I used to be a class one railroader. I was I was a gosh darn white hat at the mechanical shop out of Inner Bay in Seattle. And the biggest thing that I always had to preach was never get complacent when you're working on the railroad. And this is the reason that I wanted to make this video. I don't want to make Strasburg look bad. I don't want to make the train crews look bad. Complacency happens and it can happen to anyone and it can kill when it does happen, and thankfully no one was injured in this incident so far as I've heard. But when you get complacent, that's when people get hurt. That's when injuries happen. No matter how small the operation, or no matter what it is, or no matter how little and insignificant or silly it seems, oh, we're at the Colorado Railroad Museum with a half mile of track. What could go wrong? Oh, we're at the Strasburg, and it's a flat railroad in Pennsylvania that's only a couple miles long, and they run old steam trains. You can never let that attitude prevail, and you can never stop having your head on a swivel. You have to have your wits about you, and you have to be looking at everything you do. Yes, it feels dumb to go, okay, good iron, or lined up, or yes, the switch is lined the right way, and check the points, and saying it out loud, you feel... A lot of times it feels like this is so basic 101, why do we even have to say it? You have to say it and do it because the one time you forget to is the time that an accident happens. I feel absolutely terrible for the crew. I feel terrible for the railroad. This is an awful incident that hurt a really historic locomotive. Thankfully, that's all that was hurt. Maybe the excavator bucket, too. At the end of the day, you can replace a headlight and a smoke box door front and, and anything in the smoke box that was damaged. That's all stuff that can be fixed. You can't fix people when they get broken. And yes, we joke about on the channel all the time about derail valley and derailments and peeing in a cup and everything and all the silly memes. But at the end of the day, these are several hundred ton pieces of metal that will kill you at a moment's notice if you are not paying attention and not doing the right thing. It doesn't matter if you're just a guy in the shop working on something or if you're in train crew, you need to be careful when you're working around big machinery. And I'm thankful that no one was hurt with this incident, but goodness, it could have been so much worse. Have they been going faster? What if it punched a hole in the flu sheet? The repercussions could have been a lot worse than this, as ugly as it looked. And this this is the point that I want to drive home to everyone that watches this channel and watches this video. You have to be safe and you have to be with it when you're working on this equipment. If you're having a bad day or a bad week or your head's not in the game, 
you should not be operating this stuff. I'm no stranger to having a bad day and having something bad happen. When I was working on 491 at the Colorado Railroad Museum, and we were inspecting the flexible stable caps that hadn't been taken off in quite some time because the engine hadn't seen service in 50 years, they didn't want to come off. And so I was using the Rosebud torch to heat them to remove them, getting them to glow a dull red, and then they'd come off nice and easy. And I took it at face value that my coworker had drained the boiler completely, and he hadn't. And so there was water still in the bottom of the boiler. So when I went to heat the bottom stable cap, the cap rocketed off as the, the water flashed to steam from the torch, I presume. I don't know exactly how it happened. But the cap rocketed off. It hit the number four driver and bounced out across the shop. Had it bounced in, it would have gone through my head. This is how hard this piece of metal hit that wheel. It dented it, and that's like quarter inch plus thick steel. My complacency and not checking and inspecting to make sure that the water was removed almost got me killed. You can't be complacent when you work around this stuff. No matter if it's in the shop, working on a stable, or if you're in train crew, as the fireman, the engineer, you need to be repeating each other's calls and calling out the switches. Lined up, good iron, switches lined for the main, etc. Firemen should look at the target, look at the points, same as the engineer. Everyone needs to be on the same page and the same team. And it's really unfortunate this happened at the Strasburg Railroad. I feel bad about having to share this information on the channel because I'm sure that Strasburg is dealing with awful PR and everything as it sits right now. But Strasburg Railroad is a railroad full of professional railroaders and real people that do a really good job. They do a good job in the shop. They do a good job in operations. I've ridden the railroad. I love the railroad. I support them. This could happen at any railroad. When you're having a bad day, your head's not in the game. This is one of the reasons why it's so critical that you need to have a good briefing and make sure everyone's on the same page and everyone's got their head in the game when you start work for the day. Because this, this could have happened anywhere to any engineer. It's not just the Strasburg's fault or the Strasburg screwed up. Someone had a really bad day, and thankfully they're still here to talk about it. That's all I wanted to impress upon you guys, and those are my kind of two cents about the incident from the day. I've gotten a bunch of comments asking about it, of course. Uh, and it's tragic, and, and they're going to have to fix the 475, but I have full confidence that they'll be able to, and, and the railroad will continue. If you're going to do this sort of stuff, make sure you stay safe while you do it.